Welcome to Quilt Cam. I'm Bonnie Hunter, and this is my uh, studio time. And I have to remember to talk to the camera, not to the top of the laptop like I'm used to doing. Um, I started working on this baby quilt last Quilt Cam session about a week ago before I left for New Hampshire. This is uh, because I have two baby nephews due in July. My sister and her husband are having their fourth baby, and my brother and his wife are having their second. Um, and I'm really excited. They're both going to be boys, and they'll be raised as cousins close together. And I grew up with cousins, and I think that uh, cousins are the bomb. So I want to do two similar quilts for them, but maybe just different enough that they can differentiate whose quilt is whose. And this is the block that I came up with. These are um, leader ender nine patches, and I've set them with half sashings. The sashings go around two corners of each block so that I can lay them out domino style. And uh, that's what I'm going to be working on. Since we're at the beginning of Quilt Cam, we've been doing Quilt Cam for almost a year now. Uh, we started out on um, Ustream, which was, eh, <laughs> at best it was okay, at worst it was terrible, but I'm so happy to have this on um, Google Hangouts right now. Um, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why I do Quilt Cam and why we're even bothering with this whole recording thing. Um, my idea for Quilt Cam was because I never get enough time to sew. I am always working on a deadline and my days are very full and busy. And then I would find myself worn out at the end of the day and ready to throw myself into a recliner and read a book or do something with my feet up. And I felt like, gosh, I, I didn't get any sewing time. So what if, just what if, I did a live studio session and got my quilting friends to join me from their studios and we could just sew together. We have had people from Australia and New Zealand and South Africa and all over Europe and all over the Americas and Canada and South America join in and when we were on Ustream, the problem was it was live streaming and unrecorded. So people were setting their alarm clock for 3 a.m. in Ireland so that they could come watch Quilt Cam. And I thought, geez, you know, would I do that for anybody? I don't know. So when Google Hangouts um, came up as an option, we grabbed it. And so the sessions are now recorded so that those who are in other time zones can join at their leisure. Maybe somebody works nights or it's the wrong time zone for them. Well, they can pop on quilt cam in their studios while they're sewing whenever they want to. I have got some comments um, on YouTube about how it was getting a bit boring watching me just sew and couldn't I please teach something like pressing or cutting or an actual pattern. And I thought about how to reply to this. That's not what quilt cam is about. You have Craftsy for that, and you have other online venues for that, and there are lots of YouTube videos that teach an actual pattern step by step, how to cut it, how to sew it, how to press it, and they have their own reasons for providing those kinds of videos and classes. I'm here for studio time for myself, and even if Quilt Cam were not on, this is what I want to be doing, just some leisure time. My whole life is about teaching quilting every day. Um, you know, I've had, what, two days in between New Hampshire and leaving for Pennsylvania tomorrow. The last thing that I want is to come on to Quilt Cam at 9 p.m. in the evening and teach a class. I just want to hang out with the girls. I just want to be another quilter working with fabric, putting the fabric through the machine. So that's what Quilt Cam is about, and I hope that you'll still enjoy it. And I hope that even if it might seem a little boring to you, maybe you've got a boring project that you can pull out and work along with me, and we'll make progress on these things together. 
So what I'm going to do now is lay my block quarters out and just make block halves. This block is made in a way that if I make two halves identically and rotate the first half upside down, it will complete the block. So I never worry about matching, matching things until it gets time to match the halves. And I really don't think if I end up with too much of the same thing next to the same thing that these baby boys are going to care. So which way does that seam go? That way. So this one's going to go that way, that one's going to go that way, and that's where we are. Because if I take these and rotate them around, yep, that's right where we'll be. Okay. So I, I hope that helps you understand what quilt cam is. My goal with quilt cam is to help you get just that much more out of your day that you want something and feel good about it the next morning when you wake up and see what you did and feel good that you made some progress on something. How many of us have 99 projects on a spreadsheet and yet we're not making any progress on anything? You know, that's <laughs> what we call quilters, it's the um, attention deficit quilting disorder. Um, thanks to my friend Nancy. I think I want this one to be here. Too much of the same orange next to the same. Okay. So baby quilts can just be really easy, don't you think? And quilt them to death because we know they're going to be washed and loved and washed and loved. I finished up the binding and the hanging sleeve on the Sister's Choice quilt that I was making with the pink star points. Good thing. It's going off to uh, Beaver, Pennsylvania with me tomorrow. And uh, got it tucked into the quilt duffel and, and those are all packed and ready to go. My suitcase with my clothes is all packed. And we'll be hitting the road bright and early at quarter after 4 a.m. So if quilt cam runs a little bit short tonight, you'll know why. But this is just really easy straight sewing. There's no seams to match, so I'm not even pinning. I'm just matching the beginning and the end and, and uh, shoving it on through. These are 10 inch blocks and I'm going to set it four or three by four so there'll be 12 blocks total and then I'll decide what to do with borders. I'm making a rectangular baby quilt rather than a uh, square one just because I want this little guy to use it until he's time for his uh, big boy bed. I'm kind of shuffling these around if I see I have too much of the same fabric side by side. You know, us quilters, we can't stand to have the same thing touch. Heaven forbid. I've actually got a window down open in the studio where there seems to be a lot of that one lime green. I must have liked it. <laughs> If this is your first time watching, you can leave a comment on the blog post where this uh, webcam is being featured. Go to quiltville.blogspot.com and click on the comments link at the bottom of the post below the viewing screen. You have to have a Google ID to comment there. Leave a question or a comment. Or if you are an unregistered Google user, you can use the blue guestbook button that's in the left hand sidebar or you can drop me an email at quiltville at gmail.com 
Let me sew one more and we'll see who's tuning in with us tonight. It was so nice outside today that I've got the window open just to crack just this much and that fresh spring air feels so good. Okay. Right to my inbox here. The computer is, the laptop is actually sitting on a shelf behind the machine, so there's no way to reach a keyboard and check on the laptop for comments or questions, and that's why I do it um, from my phone here. Here's Carla who says, I love stitching along with you, Bonnie. It's like an old fashioned sewing bee. I am usually working on some applique or hand quilting and enjoy sewing along. I'm so glad, Carla, glad that you could tune in tonight. Prima Donna says, maybe you should have pointed out that the sites that do that also charge a good bit. It amazes how ungrateful people can be. <laughs> well, I think they just didn't understand that the whole point of Quilt Cam is not to teach a class. It's not another class. I just don't want to be working right now. I just want to be sewing. She says, I learn something every time I watch Quilt Cam, and thank you, Bonnie. You are welcome. This one is from Anne Marie, and she says, love, love, love Quilt Cam. I enjoy so much just hanging with you and sewing. Taking Pfeffer Noose. I know I spelled it wrong, but I'm just too lazy right now to go and find the correct spelling. Oh, this is funny, because I will go ahead and spell it wrong and then just see if it has a, a red squiggle under the word. That's my clue to see if I need to fix the spelling. And I've learned how I have it all over, through my life, continuously spelled certain words long, and until they had a red squiggle under it, I never knew. She says, um, taking Pfeffer Noose with you at Hershey at Quilt Odyssey. I'm so excited. I have it all cut and ready to go. You do already? That's July. You are amazing, girl. She says, see you then. Kim says, live quilt cam the way it is. Thanks for being there. Gets me working here, too. Rearranging my upstairs sewing space so I can sew see my monitor, and look outside, and hopefully my Minnesota friends will be able to see some brown dirt on the ground by this weekend because they had snow through today. She says, I'll pull out Easy Street with temps expected to rise into the upper 60s in Minnesota. I know we will be outside. Must sew when I can, which is now. You know, that's why I, I leave sewing time for dark because uh, it got dark at 9, p you know, between 8 and 9 p.m. here. Otherwise, I'm running crazy. This is from Sherry who says, I for one love Quilt Cam. I do not think it is boring. I think it is awesome that you do take us the time to sew with all of us. My two and a half year old grandson Thomas also loves watching Bonnie sew kilts. <laughs> he just got his first pair of scissors and is cutting construction paper right now while watching. In fact, he is telling me to make Bonnie come back on because when I started this comment, he could not see you. <laughs> Hi Thomas, how are you sweetheart? It says, just remember you can't please all of the people all the time, and there are always a few people that just want to stir the pot. I know. And that's why I thought I would put it out here in video form and in the written form so that people just know what I'm doing here. This is It's not a class. That's what Craftsy is for. And they have some good ones. This girl's just got to get some machine time in. We have a lot of that red, too. Shake this up, baby. I plugged my iron in right next to me, just in case I get some ironing time. My thought is, if I iron these all one direction, because I'm just making the upper halves, right? I'm not sewing an upper half and a bottom half. I'm just making all upper halves. Half of those will come around and be the bottom half. If I press them all one direction, by the time I bring the other half around, well, those seams aren't going to automatically nest, and that's my hope. I like to just do as little thinking as possible. And as much shuffling <laughs> as possible. So I've never flown into the Pittsburgh airport before, so this will be a little bit different. Although I have to deal with Newark again for my first morning layover. It's got to be a conspiracy because this is Newark trip number four in less than two weeks. So I was thinking about maybe red for the alternate color. 
if red doesn't work, maybe just a different blue or maybe a green for the other cousin's baby quilt. We looked at the salvage for this one and I think it said something like 1992 or 1993 for this little star print. But baby fabrics are always baby fabrics. I don't think they go out of style. Okay, we're getting down there, guys. All of these manly plaid shirts will make a very cute baby quilt for a little boy. Speaking of little boys, I'm really excited for my friend Leanne. She and her husband just returned from China last week with their brand new baby boy. His name is Wade and I cannot wait to meet him. He's just a charmer. Watching her with the adoption process, I was just really humbled with what it takes for somebody who wants to adopt a child to make that dream come true. Okay, something's a bit odd. I have one oddball. We'll just go as far as we go. I may have to make one more of those. And I've still got my leader ender spool blocks over here. Did you see? Um, if if you're on Facebook, you would have seen my friend Lynn's leader ender spool quilt top. She used red as her background, and she sent a picture of her top. Um, if you're on Facebook, you can check that out in my news feed today. Maybe I'll post a link to it on the blog tomorrow. Which is another thing dancing through my head is oh my goodness. 6 a.m. flight <laughs> to Newark. I may be writing my tomorrow morning's blog post from the airport because I don't think I have time tonight to do it. Schools just keep giving. All right, so here we are. Here's our blocks. Block halves, anyway. If I was at a large ironing board, I'd lay them down on top of the ironing board and press them all one direction. But I'm just at a small little board here, so I'm going to cut them apart first. But let's get some uh, comments coming in. Here's from Tartan who says, Quilt Cam is awesome. It's so great to have company for what is usually a solitary hobby. I agree. I think you can gauge how popular it is by those of us that regularly sew along with you. One of the good things about um, Ustream was that it would tell us how many people had watched during the entire session and how many people were joining in or dropping off at any particular time but I think I kind of like this and that I don't know and if it's only a few of you fine if it's a lot of you I'm not scared we just do this um, here is May who says love cool cam just the way it is thank you so much for letting us watch and sew along for the thrill of it we love you as you are and she says the snow won't go away in Traverse City Michigan so what are you sewing on tonight send me some uh, ideas of what you got going on And no, I don't have one of those little purple guillotine things. To me, they're just awkward. They take up table space. That purple thing, I just like my scissors. Exercises the hand, you know. And there's the last leader 
Coriander Spool just finished. Kind of a purple burgundy with a little floral background. It's got a cream background with pink tulips and, and, and blue other flowers, but I'd still consider that as a neutral. We've talked about neutrals before. How are you coming along with adjusting to that? Is it making your quilts more interesting? I hope so. All right. Oh, here's another thing I should mention. Um, if you have signed up on the blog to receive the digest of blog posts at the end of the day, that means you put your own email address in that little slot and said, yes, I want these um, notifications of blog posts. The only way you can unsubscribe is to unsubscribe yourself because you're the one that subscribed. I don't have access to your email address or anything to turn it off for you. So at the bottom of those is a little link that says unsubscribe me. Click that and it'll take care of that. But you have to be sure that you put in the address that you subscribed with. It doesn't know which address to unsubscribe you from unless you put it in there. Okay. Hope that helps somebody. I have a lady that's been emailing me every day. Please stop this. Please stop this. But I can't. You signed up through Google, so <laughs> I'd stop you if I could, believe me. Okay, this is from Deanna, who says, a quick hello from cold and rainy Missouri. Just want to let you know you are not boring. <laughs> Thank you so much. My kids may think otherwise. Um, I learn something every time I watch Quilt Cam, and I love having it on YouTube now. If I miss something, I can go back and watch it again. Tonight I have been finishing up hand stitching the binding on a table runner I am giving my daughter and son-in-law to auction off at a benefit dinner auction they are having for a friend of theirs with cancer. I hope the bidders don't notice my imperfections. They won't. The bidders are going to be clear way back there. <laughs> they won't see it. We focus in on those because we know they're there. But um, I live by the six feet away rule. I think there's way too many galloping horses and that's just not realistic, but the six feet away rule works for me. Diane says, yay for quilt cam and even though you don't think you're teaching we are all learning plenty. Good, I'm glad. How else would I know about sparkling ice water? Love that stuff as soon as I found it here. And vintage machines. My new Singer 99 is at the shop getting a tune-up and when I mentioned that I might be interested in a hand crank the mechanic told me he has a couple for me to look at when I go in. Oh enablers. <laughs> Fun, fun, fun. That sounds awesome. Somebody just jingled my phone. Let's see what that is. It says, enjoying quilt cam, lazy Sunday, and wild and goosey on this snowy night in Cedarville, Michigan. Quilting with friends inside. That's awesome. So hello to Cedarville, Michigan. And then this is Mary, who says, it's Mary in Canada, where we are such fans of quilt cam. DH watches with me. Putting my Rick Rack 9s together tonight, been working on it for two years. That's the thing about leader and ender projects. They, they seem to take forever, but before you know it, you've got a free quilt that doesn't seem to really take any specific time at all until it's time to put the blocks together. I am going to move my little ironing board just right here. And you can't see because the machine's in the way, but I'm on a very short cord, so I can't move any farther than that. But I'm just going to press these towards the sashing because the seam does not want to press against back against itself. That's the way it wants to go. So therefore, that's the way it shall go. And I'm just going to press these and stack them up. All of these units should be identical to each other, these block halves, and we will twist and turn them after we get these pressed. So this is going to be a very short trip to uh, Pennsylvania this time. My second trip to Pennsylvania this month. I will be with the Beaver Peacemakers in Beaver. We've got a lecture tomorrow night, a trunk show, and then two days of Sister's Choice. They had so many people who wanted the class, they filled it twice, and I'm more than happy to do that. And I have my new sample to bring with me, so I'm excited. And then I come home. So that's Wednesday's the lecture. That's tomorrow. Thursday class, Friday class, back to the airport Friday night and home. My son Jason's coming out on Saturday, so I'll be spending the week with him. And then I have just a couple days before heading up to Maine next Thursday. So I think that 
This is probably going to be it for quilt cam until I get back from Maine because it's just been uh, crazy trying to fit it in. I love how the fabric feels warm when you iron it. Fun. So I don't even think there will be time for antique malls in Pennsylvania. With a flight that gets in tomorrow and a lecture tomorrow night, nope, nope, nope. But there should be some time for some fun on uh, Thursday after class. I always look forward to that dinner with the guild ladies. You know, if you want to meet the best people in the world, join a guild. There is nobody who will accept you more and encourage you more, inspire you more. All of my best girlfriends I have met through quilt guilds. Or quilting in general, I guess. Just a couple more and we can get back. These nine patches uh, <laughs> were leaders and enders on the treadle machine while I was learning to use the treadle machine. They're not all that perfect. I don't think this baby's going to care. Okay, so those are now pressed. And here we go. So, this is what I had. See how these are identical? But if I turn one, whoops, I gotta turn it the other way, I gotta turn it this way. There we go, okay. So I turned it around and put it on the other side. And now they will combine to make that pattern. So I'm just gonna match them to whichever one wants to go with whichever one. The only seam to match is the center one, so I'm not, I'm just pinching that together as I go. I like these though. So, what I usually do is nest that center seam first and hold it between my fingers and then align my top edges so I know where to start, start sewing. If there's any variation in between, it's going to ease between those two points. And then once I've passed the center point, I can align the two bottom edges and hold those tight. So I sew from point to point to point to point, aligning things as I go. I just love this machine. <laughs> it sews so well. Just like butter. It's got a, a very powerful motor. I think a more powerful motor than on, are on most new plastic machines. 
Here's one from Laura who says, I don't think my first message got posted. I just can't believe the nerve of people. It's okay, girl. We, we took care of it. We, we set it out there. This is the way that it is. Quilt cam is my sewing time, and it's not a class. That's all I needed to say. She says, uh, you give so much and so many free patterns and information. I feel like I'm quilting with a longtime friend. Just keep on doing what you're doing. You got it. You keep on doing it, too. Shirley says, how hard would it be to get a bobbin case for the machine you are sewing on? Um, not. It's a standard class 15 machine. But here's something I can tell you. Oh, I'd have to take it out of the machine to show you. That's all right. Let's do that because that gives us something to talk about. All right. So, yes, I just ended my thread because we have to. This catches on that latch just a little bit. Okay, so this is the bobbin case for this machine. And do you see where this little deal is pointing? This one points to about 1 o'clock. If you're looking at it like a clock face, do you see how it's a little bit off center clockwise? So it, this one points to 1 o'clock. There are also some bobbin cases that point to 11 o'clock. You just have to know which one you need. And I believe it's the zigzag machines that have their bobbin finger at 11 o'clock. And the, the straight stitch only machines like, like this Atlas at 11. So you just have to know which machine you've got, which kind of bobbin you, you need, case you need. If you look inside, you will see the little, the little divot where the, where the little bobbin case finger fits. And you can tell, is that pointed over to 1 o'clock or is that pointed at 11 o'clock? If you know that much, you should be able to get um, a bobbin case. It's pretty standard. I would just go to my regular old sewing machine guy, um, you know, this old sewing back place. Those are often better than, say, the Bernina dealer or the Janome dealer or the Viking dealer who specifies, uh, specialize only in one brand of machine because they're only going to have parts for just that one kind of machine. But your, so, you, your regular sewing Sewing vac guy, they will have parts for just about everything. So this is a, a one o'clock finger, and it's going right back in. Does that help? Hope so. Okay. You can hear that click when it gets seated in there, and then I'll bring that bobbin thread right back up. Maybe right back up. Maybe I didn't get the thread through the... All right, try that again. There we go. Our bobbin thread up. Okay, put this all back together. And then I'll just start back at the end of this just for my leader. Okay. Jingle jingle on the phone. Should we check who it is? The tip on using wax paper pre-cuts for hamburger patties works great for the paper piecing foundation for Wild and Goosey. So that must be a uh, a tip from Quiltmaker Magazine. That's awesome. She says, I knew I saved those little scraps and just got this from Quiltmaker May, June 13. You go, girl. And that's Tammy back in snowy Cedarville, Michigan, where it won't stop snowing. Yep. Mine, as far as my foundations for Wild and Goosey, mine were just printed on reject printer paper. I don't have a problem sewing with that. Did I sew that wrong? Oh, I see. I need to rotate this upside down. There we go. Get that center seam nested and hold it there. So oftentimes when you're printing something, and you know how it goes, you print a document, you get one page, and the second page has like one line that just has like the date and the time on it at the top of the page. I will put those in a separate pile and use the back side of those or even the front side again for my um, paper piecing blocks. And I, if you use a denim needle like a size 14 and put your stitch length very small, the paper is not hard to remove. 
but I remove the paper as soon as I am done making the unit. I will trim the unit up and remove the paper right then. So there is no paper in the units when I am sewing them to each other. Once the, once the paper's out, I mean, once the, the trimming has been done, there's no reason to leave the paper foundation in there. Picking it out of the seam allowance is the worst. Worst, 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 and I won't do that. I'm suppo I suppose I ought to fix this. Can I fix the angle on the camera a little bit? I'm afraid to get the camera top heavy. It's a little one do there. Maybe now you can see better. It's a one dollar tripod <laughs> from, from the Dollar Tree. One dollar. But the legs are kind of like... Rrr. Myra says, I too love quilt cam. This is my opportunity to do really boring stuff, <laughs> but have a cheery company while I'm doing it. I just ripped papers out of 18 string piece blocks. Now I'm cutting 5 inch squares, which will be subcut to make 3 inch squares out of half square triangles. Quilt cam is far better than TV. Keep up the good work. Tomorrow is a trip to the Salvation Army to look for some shirts to debone. And that's Myra in town Fort Wayne, Indiana. And Linda says, just wanted to tell you that without quilt cam, I would never, next to never, get any binding done. Thank you so much for inviting us to your corner of the world, and thank you for joining me and mine. All right, back to the inbox. Holy moly, Queen of Pearl says, from Christina in Cleveland, I really like hanging out with you while we sew together separately. <laughs> Feels like having someone over to sew with me, or we can just chat, or listen, or just hang. Waving hello from Cleveland to you and all my friends by proxy. That's wonderful. And Paula Z in Arizona says, I'm working on floating stars from a swap in 2005. Goodness, I've sewn 200 blocks into twos and have about 316 more to go, but who's counting? Um, then turn them into fours. I've got about 100 more with one side with half square corners and a box full of two by twos ready to add to those two. So she's um, going to, she says, I'm going to start packing up the blocks for the leaders and enders bow ties. The quilt you posted this morning gave me the incentive. You gave me inspiration and I've learned so much and continue to do so. I'm sending that package I emailed, told you about a few months ago. Dad had cancer and passed away April 6th. Found the package lying on my cutting table the other day. It will soon be on its way. That is just wonderful and, and prayers and thoughts and hugs to you on your, on your dad's passing. I know that's not easy. Um, let's see, this one is from S. Gray, which I, I saw the, when I, when I see the little icon like this, that means somebody is replying to the, the mail, the blog in the mail updates, and it's like, please don't be screaming at me to unsubscribe you, because I can't. But she's not. She says, watching you come in loud and clear, working with my AccuQuilt cutter on Christmas gifts. It's April. She's working on Christmas gifts. This gal is organized. Thank you for all you do, and thank you for turn, tuning in. Yes. So, let's sew some more of these. Okay, I'm liking these. These are going to be really simple. I hear feet prints upstairs, too. The hubster may be home. Or my son. You have to give the man a lot of credit. After all, he's getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning to take me to the airport. I keep thinking I'm doing these the wrong direction. What am I doing? No, nope, that has to go...
Where am I? Losing my brain. There we go. Some of these may open up and look really strange. So what I'm thinking is, you know, maybe, just maybe, of course my brain is always working on maybe. Son Jason is coming on Friday so that he can play golf with his dad this weekend. And I wanted to spend time with them, but how much time am I going to get with them if they're playing golf, right? So maybe while they're playing golf, I could do an afternoon quilt camp. We just might fit it in before Maine after all, but we'll see. Because I'd like to keep working on these baby quilts. Half of these are turned the other way. This is going to be crazy. I know that it has to in, totally enclose. There we go. Oops, that has the same one, so we won't do that. That's better. So when do you decide whether you're going to put a certain border on a quilt? Do you design a quilt with a border fabric already in mind, or you just kind of let the quilt do its own thing? I was thinking piano keys on this one, or maybe string blocks, or something. Because it's only going to be 30 by 40 before borders. It's going to need something. And heaven knows I have a lot of recycled shirt fabric to use up. That's cute. I see a lot of yellow in these. The yellow is really um, popping out to me. So maybe I'll, I could do like an inner border of yellow and then go off into something else. That would be cute. Good. I will probably have to square these up a bit before sewing them together. That's generally not a problem for me, but these since these these uh, nine patches were a little on the wonky side to begin with, I just want to be sure. Somewhere down at the end of here. <laughs> ah, there they are. Leader ender spools. To make? Well, I was shooting for around 700. How many am I at? Uh, somewhere about about 400, I think. This one may go past July. I'm also on the maybe side of actually not going to Oregon this year. I've just been on the road so much that the thought of getting onto another plane. We were hoping that maybe we'd have our little cabin on the mountainside for 4th of July. So I may turn the Sisters Oregon thing into an every year thing, just because I'm feeling the need to scale back just a little bit. Okay. 
inbox. Who are we talking to today? Library Lady Tanya in Missouri says, love quilt cam just the way that it is. You inspire me. I'm working on a quilt of valor quilt tonight in rainy cold Missouri. We have a request for 30 quilts by June for a group of Vietnam vets. I am thinking that the quilt you are working on would look great in reds and whites and blues. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Thanks for all you do for us. And that's Tanya in Missouri. And these are, I can give you the rundown quick. Um, the, the nine patches are made with two inch squares and the sashings are cut inch and a half. And the, the nine patches are just framed on two sides. That's all. Two sides, two sides, two sides, two sides. And that's about all I can do for directions right now. There may be further directions later after I finish the quilt. Um, Mary says, I'm stretching myself in the use of your kind of neutrals, <laughs> your kind of neutral, in the sister of, of my sister's choice for one of my new granddaughters that will be here at the end of summer. Good girl. I really love looking at mine and the, the little, you know, where the Winnie Pooh, Winnie the Pooh actually showed his little face and his belly was so cute. I did take some pictures out on the deck today, so that's what was going to be tomorrow morning's um, blog post. Here's Kathleen who says, working on my row along, my first row quilt on row number six, coffee mugs. I love quilt cam and that's Kathleen in San Juan, Texas. Julie says, hi, Bonnie, from snow still on the ground, Colorado. Julie here in Where is Spring, Colorado. Yep, we have had possibly the snowiest April in Colorado ever. I am so over it. I'm sure it's been great for the skiers, though. She says, anyway, keep doing what you do because we love it. Quilt Cam is great just the way it is. Still working on Dear Jane applique blocks tonight. Quilt Cam is just the motivation I need for this mammoth project. It really is a mammoth project. Mine is hanging behind the quilt machine back here. You can kind of see it out there. It's been hanging since, I think it is 2003 or 2004 or 5. So it's been done quite a while, and it's it hung in my living room for several years, and then when we moved here, the last five years, it's hung here. I'm noticing that some of the fabrics are starting to fade, and am I okay with that? Yeah, that's the life of a quilt. You know, I would rather that I get to see it every day and enjoy it, even if a bit of fading happens, than keeping it in a pillowcase in a closet where it never sees the light of day. It gives me uh, a happy smile every day. Jan says, I'm working on tearing papers off my geese. Slow progress. Also, the back of Easy Street is attached. Love Quilt Cam as is. And I'm opening up her. Okay. She's working on her string geese. Remember our, our geese on a string that we did um, earlier in the winter time? Or was it? That was this past winter, wasn't it? So she's got her string geese right there that she's trimmed up and she's removing the paper from, which is always a... Uh, one of those mindless projects. While I was in uh, New Hampshire, I had a whole baggie of my wild and goosey block quarters with me. And I spent a couple evenings just removing the paper. It's brainless, and it's a good thing to do. And this one is from Peggy in Greensboro. Is this my Greensboro? She says, hey, Bonnie, thanks for quilt camp tonight. I need something to help me veg out. I got up this morning and started sewing at 9 and sewed all day long till 6 p.m. I have another twin quilt for the Veterans Homeless Shelter pinned and ready to quilt tomorrow. This will be number 10 and at least half and the oh and at least half are from your free patterns. Thanks for all you do for us and Peggy, thank you for all you do for the veterans and and for keeping them in your thoughts. That what a worthy cause. This one is from Janet at Sunshine Quilt Guild and she says, "Yes, Yes, you do for us as you can and as you please and we love what we get and we will be grateful and if you want family time and no quilt cam or whatever for the quiltville holics we understand we love you always from janet thank you very much here's another patricia who says she is ripping off that's the, the title says ripping off and i'm going what is she ripping off oh she's got her feet up on the top of the desk and she is ripping off the papers from her Virginia bound quilt. Whole lot of depapering going on tonight. What a great thing for quilt cam time. Yes, and I am going to snip the rest of my blocks and we can figure out exactly how many I have here. That one must have just been an extra. 
So what is your favorite size of baby quilt? If I do 30 by 40 as the center and then put borders, I'm still going to end up with a back that is bigger. Well, I'd like to, one width of fabric, is that wide enough for a baby quilt? Sometimes I think if I make it just a bit bigger, it can be used longer. Let's see what the jangle jingle on the phone is. This is... Oh, that looks really, really great. That's Tammyville and Cedarville. Tammyville. <laughs> Sorry, Tammy. She just sent pictures of her wild and goosey block quarters. There she is. Aren't those going to be fun? I'm not sure how I'm going to be setting mine yet. So far, they were just they were just block quarters that I was making, and it, it was um, so many requests. We sent it off to Quilt Maker for the column. And now it's my my goal to uh, turn actually turn them into something. And I'm not sure. Will I use an alternate block? I don't know. Will I set them on point or on the straight with sashings? I don't know. Sometimes I like the adventure that way. See how we're coming? Nothing wrong so far. really really like these. I'll get to lay these out when we're done. They are a little bit wonky on the outside edges so I'm going to square them up a little bit better. They're just a little wooey. That's okay. Now when I'm talking about squaring up what I'm really saying is squaring down right because there is no up you can only trim off so I'm going to be careful. Sometimes if things are just a hair short, I will float it in the next seam. And I think I've talked about that before. If it's just a few threads off, we just don't align it all the way to the edge of the next patch. I dropped one on the floor. But sometimes there are things that are really uneven. That's okay. It's a baby quilt. It's random acts of public sewing. And if you're going to make blocks that are really bad, it's going to be in front of a whole bunch of people that are watching you live on camera. There we go. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve! I've got my twelve! Good! So this was just an extra. Maybe he'll go in the border or something. Okay. So let's see where we are. Now I usually do quilt cam for about 90 minutes, but we're going to cut it short tonight because I do have a 4 a.m. wake-up call and still have some stuff I need to get done before heading to bed tonight. But let's check um, the emails here. This is from Vic in New Hampshire, who was so sweet to bring me Diet Dr. Peppers at class in Manchester. She says, I'm binding a 4x4 four four block set of Civil War scrappy log cabins for a baby quilt and love what you are doing with your design. So far I haven't tackled another magnificent midnight flight block, but I will. Thanks again for a great time in New Hampshire. And uh, this is um, this is from uh, Marge Smith who says, love you on Facebook, so I thought I would drop by and visit. Have been working off and on this week on a French press coffee cozy. It's turning out cute if I say so myself. Sometimes those sh short little projects that you can get done in a shorter amount of time um, are just feel good, aren't they? I think they are. Ginny says, sewing along making Civil War blocks. And TLC says, working on 50 shades of green, 
aka just plain nuts in green fabrics about to call it a night also awakened by a hysterical sister this morning one of her labs ate a bag of coffee oh no so does that cause um, 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 digestive problems off to the vet I'm sure do they induce vomiting on dogs or do they do that themselves oh cannot imagine yes and this one yes Lori in Bradenton says have the window open wide here tonight as it was 85 degrees earlier working on cutting down some t-shirts for several memory quilts making strips from the scraps and braiding them into rug multitasking like a true mom I love quilt cam learn something new every show keep it up we sure will and Peggy says I like watching you so tonight I am still working on refilling my fabric to fit my new shelves used your folding method modified it to fit my needs my shelves are 18 inches wide so I fold fabric at 18 inches then I know how many yards I have every two folds equals one yard love it now I can see my fabric and use it I think that's important if you don't know what you have how do you know what you can use and then we go out and we buy some more so I think that we need to re reacquaint ourselves with our stash on a regular basis. Um, this is from um, Yvonne in Texas. Is the pattern you're working on tonight on your website? No, because it's not made yet. <laughs> no, I don't write the pattern before I make the quilt. So this is me just working on the blocks and when I get the blocks finished and get the quilt made then um, directions will be made and be on the blog the babies are due in July so hopefully sometime before then I'll have it up there but for right now I'm just just working on it and this one is from material girl who says enjoying quilt cam as always you get me motivated to get working on something there's always a UFO or two to work on safe travels and that, thank you Bonnie and that's from Gwen Yeah, and this one, oh, this is a comment on YouTube from Shell View. says, I love that you are planning as you go with this quilt. That is one of the most relaxing things I do. Now, I've got just a few minutes here to sew, and I can't go any farther on these. So I've got several of my, my spools here, and they're all pinned in sets of ten. And maybe... Maybe just maybe I will lay some of these out. Try to spread the colors around. I was wanting to sew these into fours. I'm going to need a little bit more variety than this. So let's grab this stack over here. And I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. So I was just going to set them in fours. And... This is called Bonnie is running out of things to do because she didn't plan enough <laughs> stuff for quilt cam. The quilt that's hanging on the machine behind me. That's for our um, collaboration celebration retreat here with Mickey Dupree and myself in August. And I've got to get the binding on that sucker. And I was going to put the binding on tonight, but I realized that would be too much up and down to the ironing board to get the binding prepared time, and I just didn't have it. So I think what I'm going to do is get the binding on that little thing, and then it may travel up with me to um, Maine, and I can get the and it, work on it in the hotel room while I'm in Maine. My next trip to Maine is right after I get back from Pennsylvania. Can you tell my brain can't think and my mouth work at the same time? So anybody who's watching Quilt Cam, just because it's on YouTube on the live streaming set, um, you have to understand that we are an international group of quilt fanatics 
And yes, we actually find this this sewing machine time thing fun. And even if you don't get it, because I saw somebody else's comment that says, I don't get it, then you're just wrong. <laughs> um, have you ever seen that, that sh shirt for my quilting friends that, you know, e either you're a quilter or you're wrong? I love that one. The, the shirts with slogans are out there anymore, aren't they? They are everywhere. I just love them. And speaking of slogans, a new tab that I added to the top of the blog, you'll see it there at the top of the blog. It says Quiltville Quotes. And those are all the little memes that I have been making and for fun and posting on Facebook. And sometimes I've included them in my blog post, but mostly I've left them for Facebook. You can share them to your Pinterest boards. And you can use them on your own blog or on your Facebook page. My, my, the one this morning was really cute. It said, uh, as Mommy says, if life hands you lemons, throw them back and demand fabric. And it had a little, little vintage girl with a little vintage sewing machine sewing and talking to her dolly. All right. So this is the first block of spools. Ta -da. Pretty dang cute, don't you think? So this is this is the plan. I'm going to start sewing my spools into fours and maybe my fours into eights and however I want to set these. There's no race on these. It's just a leader ender project, but it's time for them to become something other than individual spools. That's fun. And this is another one where if you just make halves. If you set, you know, one spool this way and one spool this way and stack your piles like that. Sew them all like that. Then press them all one direction. Then half of them are going to come around and be the bottom half and those middle seams are going to oppose each other. So instead of thinking, you know, top half, bottom half, just make random halves and then you'll find something for it to go with. I like how the seams nest on these blocks. Not a lot of variety here, though. Yeah. And there's one more green one in the process. Okay. Top of the inbox. It's hard to keep up with everybody, so I'm just trying to get through this randomly. This is from Liz, who says, I haven't written during Quilt Cam for a while because I've been enjoying hearing what everybody else is doing. Thank you for being here. I have finished a couple of piece blocks and added beads to a counted thread project since 9 p.m. And now I'm working on a mini block for our guild. By the way, my crushed finger is all better and my fingernail is looking great. We'll get a manicure soon to celebrate. <gasps> manicure. I was actually thinking I need a pedicure. This is, should be when I come back on Friday, maybe Saturday. Just maybe pedicure day. I think I need it. Christy says, my first featherweight. This is a photo of me sewing with you during quilt cam while sewing on my 1950 featherweight. I got it on Craigslist for 50 bucks. Holy cow, 50 bucks. And do you see my fancy seam guide? What has she got in there? Oh, <laughs> good girl. She did the, the little uh, hotel room key sticky. We love it. Love it, love it. She says, it's a former Sam's Club gift card. I didn't realize how much I would love this machine, but I named her Opelika, where I bought her in Alabama. I love you and love Quill Cam. And oh my goodness, this is a picture from tonight because this is what I'm wearing right now. Very cool. I love this. So here's her picture. 
See that lovely little featherweight right there? Check out that seam guide. It might be a little blurry to you. But if you have not followed along with me before, go to the top of the blog under the Tips and Techniques section and scroll down to Best Seam Guide Ever. It really is. It's the best seam guide ever, ever, ever. And this is from Mary Ellen who says, Way cool, Bonnie. I tuned in this evening to see my Charlie on your webpage. He's watching with me now. Don't change anything about quilt cam. I love sewing with you. Tonight I am playing making folded log cabin blocks. Terrific. And one more from Rosemary Youngs who says, Good evening. Thank you for opening up your studio for us. What are all those beautiful cheddar blocks in the background? Oh, you can see way back there behind the door. My girlfriend Randy did um, um, a, a barrister's sew along over the past year, and she would do a couple, just a couple public domain blocks in six inch size um, over the course of the year. And this was my Jubilee project for my 50th year. Of course, that 50th year ended in January, and I'm still not done. There's a few more to do. Just from various sources, um, six inch public domain quilt blocks, and I've got to come up with a way to set them, and I think I want to do them, I was thinking kind of maybe a streak of lightning or a zigzag or, or a something or some kind of a piece of sashing, I don't know, it's just, it's just sitting there right now, but they all have cheddar backgrounds, so whatever I do with it has to be something um, that will show up, so that may become a future quilt cam project once I get these baby quilts out of the way. Well, everybody, I am cutting us off about 20 um, ahead of time because I've got a bags, bags to finish packing and I have a very early wake-up call. So in the meantime, if you are busy going on your project, don't stop just because I'm stopping. You keep going until um, you reach a good stopping spot yourself. And hopefully we will be back with you soon for another session of Quilt Cam. And, um, You'll have something to show me on what you've accomplished in the meantime. I'm going to just turn my lights out and turn my iron off. And then I have to remember to hit the end broadcast button, which I'm going to do. So until I see you next time, happy quilting, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye.